Now, let me tell you a story. Um, some years ago, when I was in my early 20s, I had the chance to complete a, an internship um, at UT Austin. So I was living in UT Austin for a while. And I remember one of the first days when I got to meet the people with in the lab that I'd be working in. I remember that uh, when the professor was introducing the main research assistant to everybody, the research assistant was super dull, quiet. It was uh, an older guy, like a mid mid thirties guy, and he's shaking everyone's hands. John, John, nice to meet you. Uh, Michael, Michael, nice to meet you. Anyone like that. So I'm sitting all the way. I'm standing all the way by the end of the of uh, the group of people that were going to help in the lab. And I remember when this man came in, now seeing me, the professor was like, his name is Carlos. And the guy looked at me, and the assistant had like a huge smile on his face, and he's like, Carlos? And he shakes my hand, super, super excited. Carlos, are you Mexican? And I'm like, yeah, partially, I'm Mexican-American. Okay, okay, very nice to meet you, man. Nice meeting you all. So, I'm like, this is kind of odd. When, when this guy saw everybody else in the lab, he was kind of, uh, kind of uh, quiet, kind of dull. But when he saw me, he got like super excited, he had like a huge smile on his face and so on. And I was always kind of found that kind of weird. And, and I realized later on why he was so happy about it, because it was the first weekend in, in, in the place, in the school. And I got, a, I got a phone call, and it was this guy. And he's telling me, Carlos, how are you, man? And I'm like, good, how are you? And he tells me then, right up to the point, you know what, bro, uh, we have a soccer tournament going on over the weekends, and I was wondering if you would like to play with us. And I'm like, ah, I see the point. Mexicans, he thinks that I'm good at soccer. I have never, I mean, I play soccer, but I was never being good at it. My sport was basketball. But the funny thing is, I realized that he was so happy to see me because he kind of thought right away, made an assumption, Mexican, soccer. So you must be good at soccer, you're gonna help our team. Hence why the huge smile on his face. The reason why I tell you this story is about stereotypical behavior. The thing is, in our last lecture for social psychology, I do want to bring it up to the topic of what is prejudice. Now, prejudice tends often to be kind of mistaken for what is discrimination and for what is stereotype. Well, all three are somewhat connected. If you take it in the realm of social psychology, stereotype refers to a thought process. Stereotype is uh, a way for us to simplify a group of people. So we have talked before about a duplex mind perspective and how in our mind we think on two different levels of thought, which is our analytical and our intuitive. In, in the intuitive and automatic mindset is where we build schemas. And we talked about that before, is how we organize information to make the world easier for us to understand. Well, stereotype in essence is a schema that we have for how a group of people are supposed to be brought together. Saves information for us. So a stereotype is just based on any category, grouping a group of people together. If I have a stereotype about people wearing glasses, and I see 40 students, and out of the 40 students, 20 of them are wearing glasses, it's far easier for me to group everybody into one category. Perhaps I have this idea that people wearing glasses are going to be the geek, geeky students, you know? So instead of seeing 20 different individuals, I'm going to group them all together into one geeky students. In this way, I only have to think about one similar type of people instead of 20 different people. That's a stereotype. Now, prejudice is the realm where you have an emotion. So, in the realm of the emotion, typically prejudice tends to be somewhat of a negative emotion. That is often not well controlled because it deals right away for a minute, for minutes. Depending on how your schemas are created, it's a type of emotion that you may connect to it. In the case of this man that I'm telling you, he had an emotion, he was just acting in a way that was prejudicial. But it was not so much of a negative one, it seemed like the more of a positive one because he was obviously happy and excited to see me because in his mind, the emotion was a sense of excitement thinking that this guy is going to play awesome soccer and he's going to lift their team up right away. Very often, however, the, you know, the emotions that we get out of it tends to be, tend to be somewhat uh, negative. Uh, now, 
In the realm of discrimination, discrimination refers to the actual action, the actual behavior. Discrimination is what you do. Um, discrimination sometimes can be negative. So discrimination, for example, in the workplace is where you have, based off someone's gender, uh, the willingness or unwillingness to give a job to someone. Say, if somebody has an idea, secretarial jobs are supposed to be for women. So if I have one man that is well prepared and I have 10 women that are far less prepared than this guy, I might give the work to one of them and not this guy because it's not supposed to belong to that area. In the same way, you can think of perhaps if there's a stereotype that uh, high levels of position, like CEOs in a company, are supposed to be a work for men. So I uh, may see uh, a woman that is far more prepared than any other man that comes in to seek this application, this, this job. But if in my mind I cannot perceive this job being handled by a woman, I will openly discriminate by not taking her because she is a woman. That's discrimination. The question is, how are those three? So, in the level of social psychology, we have the ABC, which is affect, behavior, cognition. So, affect is the emotion, that's where prejudice comes from. Behavior is the action, here's where discrimination comes from. And cognition is the thought, and that's where stereotype comes from. This is pretty much taken as, a, as an overall, this is taken overall as a given fact in our field. And this is true in psychology overall, in clinical psychology overall, in man, uh, developmental psychology, in so many different branches of psychology, personality psychology. The thing here is, before the action and before the emotion, the first thing that comes is our thought. So how are those three connected? Here's the work, and here's the key to understand how this works. Stereotype is what fosters an emotion, and stereotype is what also leads to the behavior, the action. We talked about this before, but let me say it again. Do you have stereotypes? I'm hoping that at this time you're going like that in front of the monitor or in front of your tablet, wherever you see me, because you do. You're not going to lie to me. You do have stereotypes. I have stereotypes. Everybody has stereotypes. Stereotypes are not always bad. Stereotypes is a normal thing. It's a way for us to save information. It's a way for us to handle the work easier. It's a schema. So naturally, we tend to group people based on a common characteristic and it's a way for us to simplify the world. I continuously come up with this, this idea. So, my common example for this, do you have stereotypes of teachers? Most likely you do. The question is, do teachers have stereotypes on students? Well, yes, we have stereotypes for students. If I have a stereotype, for example, perceiving how students are going to be based off the place in the room where they seat, the spot where you seat, especially if it's consistently, can say some things about your personality. Some of you in the classroom might always sit all the way to the front. Some of you may sit all the way to the back. Some of you like to always be in the corners. Some of you don't mind and just pick any random spot. That can tell you a little bit about personality, but that's a different deal though. What we want to focus on is here in my perspective as a teacher, if I have this idea that the students sitting in the front are the good students and the students sitting in the back are the lousy, the lazy, the, the, the bad students, that may be right away a thought process that I bring into the classroom every single day. That thought process may lead to a different emotion by how students in the front approach compared to how students in the back approach. It's, it's, no, it's no mystery to know that teachers sometimes can favor students. And I don't even want to, so, I don't even want to say sometimes, like very often, student, uh, teachers favor some students. So the way that you may favor a student 
For example, as a teacher, it might be based off unconsciously or consciously based on the position where they're sitting. If a student sitting in the front comes in to seek help for something that was not well understood, I may be, based on my stereotype, more inclined to help the student to explain because in my mind I believe and I have a good feeling about the student thinking that the student wants to learn. Stereotypes are not bad, but when we let when we refuse to use our analytic mindset and we let that automatic mindset in a lazy, lazy thought go over our behaviors, our feelings, we may not really perceive the person for who the person is. If I want to keep on my lazy, automatic mindset, instead of seeing 30 different individuals, I group them up into one same student. And I don't care what you have to say, I don't care about what you have to do. Student, I have an idea for who you are and that's it. If you take it out of the realm of school, it applies everywhere. It applies everywhere. It happens in every culture, it happens in every society, it's part of who we are. It's important for us, it's very, very important for us to be aware that this is something that can happen to everybody. An automatic mindset is a lazy mindset. If you ever encounter someone whose opinions are different, or if you ever notice that you're acting different against someone, to what extent is that person really asking for it? To what extent is that person really something that I mean, the person deserves? And to what extent is it you and the automatic mindset letting that that emotion run through you or that different action run from you? We can be smaller than that. Now, as a last lesson that I'll give you in this class, the last classic study that I left all the way to the end is Robert's Cave, the experiment of Robert's Cave. And there's a couple of things that we we'll learned about that. In the Robert's Cave experiment that you've seen before, uh, there was a, a camp where kids from a similar ethnicity and a similar age range from a similar background were placed together. And by the flip of a coin, they were split for one group, another group. And they fostered competition, competition, competition. Before they notice it, kids began to hate each other. They had riots, they had fights. It was, it was, you know, it, it was kind of growing up. And then they decided to try to make a difference by collectively having them work together on the same task. The kids did so, and the results were very different. Kids began to become amicable with each other. They began to help. They began to cooperate. And it seemed like that, that kind of negative thought that they had on each other decreased. So, to really quick build it up to the last lesson, the thing here is you can have a group of people looking exactly the same and you can just flip a coin, split them up into groups. And if you foster competition for especially resources that may be perceived as scars, that like that can build the negative emotion. So, if you have a group of people that believe that jobs are scarce, that people, you know, might, that our people are in danger, if they perceive that uh, a different group is, is uh, potentially a, a threat, then of course it's very easy for people to glue, come in together, and then hate on the out group. This is a lazy mindset. You're not seeing things the way things are. For the situation that is being lived, for example, with coronavirus, you see instances of discrimination growing up against people from Asian ancestry. I've seen cases, reported cases in Mexico, where you have health workers being harassed by the people thinking that they're carrying the virus around. That's stupid. You can be smarter than that. Break the thought and the emotion and the behavior will decrease. If there's going to be one main lesson that you want to take from this course, break off the lazy mindset and really take on the potential that you have for thought. Good work.